Now that we've entered into a new decade, there's something we as a society have been avoiding for far too long that must be recognized. Seltzer is better than soda. To some, this statement may seem a bit polarizing, as soda has become an integral member of many people's families. And while this facade can be easily refuted, due to the large scale of soda loyalists around the world, it has become increasingly difficult for us seltzer drinkers to voice our opinions. So without further ado, it is time to destroy soda drinkers with a little helping of facts and science. Let us begin by observing our two subjects. First we have a bubbly seltzer, and next we have a standard cola. While both of these drinks are carbonated, which is just a fancy word for spicy water, that is where their similarities end, unsurprisingly, as by investigating their ingredients this becomes blatantly obvious. Outside of carbonated water, the only thing seltzer contains is natural flavoring. Now the truthfulness of that statement is quite beyond me, but it is inherently better than what soda has to offer. By taking a look at the back of the bottle, you can see what's inside and oh dear god, God, look at this. Phosphoric acid? Caffeine? Caramel color? Natural flavoring? This can't possibly be true. Well, judging by the 240 calories and 61 grams of both carbohydrates and sugar, those statistics seem to add up just fine. Now, let's cross-reference this with Seltzer's nutritional facts. Ah, yes. Glorious. Nothing puts a smile on my face faster than seeing so many zeros in a row. Hopefully, Father would find enjoyment out of this report card. So now with all of this information, there are quite a few things it can be equated to. Firstly, are there levels of refreshment as beverages? Because seltzer lacks all of the putrid toxins found in soda, it allows for the liquid to pass through your system much more smoothly. For instance, if one were to manhandle a seltzer and down it like a fucking mongoloid, the body wouldn't overreact and reject the large amounts of liquid coming through. The subject feels refreshed and is ready to take on the day. On the opposite side of the spectrum, after machine gunning the cola, this one feels like it wants to die. The large doses of sugar and other chemicals in the drink gave the subject a monster stomachache and caused it to feel overwhelmingly sluggish. Granted, a normal functioning human wouldn't drink soda like this, but the truth still stands. Seltzer gets the dubski for not making you feel like a decrepit old man. To segue into my next segment, let me ask you something. How many times have you gone to a restaurant and heard this? Can I get you something to drink, sir? Uh, could I get a Coke, please? Is Pepsi okay? Soda drinkers are petty. Due to all the different brands and flavors of soda, it's caused their community to have more clicks than high school. This has resulted in the uprising of soda rivalries such as Coke vs. Pepsi, Dr. Pepper vs. Mr. Pibb, uh, Mellow Yellow vs. Fresco, whatever. <laughs> While some justify the competition by saying it gives their drinks more personality and diversity, they forget to mention all of the hatred and animosity that comes along with it. Just last year, there were over seven soda-related hate crimes committed all across the globe. This is true, you can look it up. The seltzer community, on the other hand, is much friendlier and would never condone such actions. Because while we may be small in size, we make sure to support our fellow seltzer drinkers in any way possible. For instance, whenever we acknowledge each other, we'll always partake in a cool head nod. Or when we're feeling extremely daring, we'll indulge in dabbing each other up. Let's see soda drinkers do that. Finally, this brings me to my last point, the controversy behind each beverage. No, they didn't say anything racist on Twitter, but it has to do with their effect on society and how they're viewed in the public eye. Fortunately for me, soda has one of the worst images ever. Although its popularity hasn't declined, their effects on consumers' health has made them concerning. Now, I'm sure you've all been lectured throughout your childhood as to why soda is a concoction of the devil. So I'll save you all the sciencey details I didn't feel like studying. But to put it simply, soda makes you fat and can lead to dental decay, hypokalemia, low nutrients, diabetes, and bone loss. Now I know y'all don't want to lose your bones, so maybe think about that next time you take a sip of your syrupy ass shit. 
glutton. Seltzer, on the other hand, has been widely disregarded by society due to the fact that, as many people put it, it's basically just water. Who cares? There's no danger in being associated with seltzer. While some may see you as a basic bitch, the consequences are far less severe than being seen drinking soda. I mean, good heavens, we live in a time where someone can be cancelled for just about anything. And because of how disgusting soda is, you're just begging for your life to be over. So with all of that out of the way, I hope everyone understands why seltzer is objectively better than soda. Again, this is a difficult truth to comprehend. Lord knows I had trouble accepting it when I was a child. But now with the coincision of a new decade, I believe there wasn't a more perfect time to share this knowledge. In fact, when you really think about it, even soda itself has realized this, and even begun altering their drinks to be more like seltzer. Just look at the evidence. Diet soda? Zero calorie soda? Quite damning if I say so. But no need to get arrogant, as admittedly there was once a time where I found myself as a slave to the soft drink. While it may not have been the most dire of addictions, I'm informing you all of this to show that everyone has the ability to beat the temptation of soda. So with that in mind, next time you're craving a nice carbonated beverage to satisfy your needs, maybe this time you give seltzer a chance.